Hello everyone and welcome to a very special episode of Sideshow Live. We have the craziest, most amazing nostalgia show happening right now, especially if you are in my age range. Um, the writers, showrunners, creators, producers of X-Men, the animated series, you guys know it as like the 90s X-Men, most of you, are here in studio right now, and I could not be more excited. I promise, like, I just want to say, like, oh my god. Um, so we're really, really excited. We're going to be interviewing them in just a second. We have just such a great show. We also have our X-Men Premium Format Collection coming on the show uh, to kind of bookend everything that's happening with them. So we have Mystique, Wolverine, and Magneto making their appearance as well. We have a Let Your Kids Side Show announcement happening at the end of the show, so be sure to stay tuned for that. We'll also be doing live audience questions with all of our X-Men folks here. So you guys are gonna wanna get in the chats with Buffy and ask a bunch of questions because, oh my God, it is such a treat. I can't believe they're here and that we get to talk X-Men with with the X-Men crew, that's so cool. Um, so first up, we have a featured collector, correct? There we go, Jason Nicholson, wow! Take a look at your collection. Six scale, six scale, all, I wanna see what? that shield. So there you go, oh my gosh, so much. Big Marvel fan, big Star Wars fan, hey, I'm here for it. So thank you so much, Jason, for sharing your collection with us. If you would like to be the next featured collector, you can have a little bit of a shout out on our show. You can be fully featured in the blog. Head on over to side.show slash blog and click the apply now button. We love seeing how you guys display your collection, what you have in your collection. It's actually just a lot of fun for us to just sift through sometimes and see what people are collecting. So right now, we have a video break to show off the slain quarter scale statue from PCS. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Josh Barnett was here to um, kind of talk to us about the character and um, take a look at slain. So uh, we're going to take a look at that video. And when we come back, da -na 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 -na. Na -na 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 -na. yeah, I told you I was going to sing it all day, and it's happening. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be right back. So our friends over at PCS have added a new character to their expanded oh, 2000 have they. AD line. Um, and this is the epic slain statue. Oh and my gosh. not that the Pat Mills version would be would be bad in any way, because Pat Mills is awesome. But this is my man, the Bizzes <laughs> in, uh, version of, of slain. Slanya, if you want to yeah, really be say, a nitpicker about it. I do have a, it. like Slanya in like, here. Because our, right, well, yeah, yeah, our Brit wrote my notes for me and was like, it's Slanya. Slanya. And then be sure to pronounce it Warhammer 40,000. 40,000? Not 40K, 40, it's 40,000. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, oh my God, why did I let these two on the show? <laughs> um, in, in any case, yeah, I mean, Bisley's an awesome dude. I've been a huge fan of his art forever, but. Uh, it's hard to pick any one particular property that Bisley's done between, you know, Lobo and ABC Warriors and things like that. But Slanya Slain is kind of stands out on its own and is maybe the most Bisley thing ever. Maybe. Maybe. Um, Possibly. Well, because there's, you know, it's like you got with Lobo, you have the the uh, counterculture element that just like. F you, you bastard yeah. kind of aspect, uh -huh. which there's some of that in Slain, and then there's also heavy drinking in both. So yeah, it's perfect for, for Biz. Like one's in space and uh, one's a barbarian. Pretty much. Yeah. And, uh, you know, except the Corvette uh, that, that Lobo has or the motorcycle, whichever the case may be at any time, uh, that's very Biz. Now, so. now, does Slain, I'm not as familiar with the character, does mm -hmm. he have a love for um, dolphins? <laughs> How does he feel I, I don't about know. I don't know that he's ever come in contact with mammals, with a with a dolphin. I, I think that if he could cut it in half, he's okay with it. Cool. All right. Yeah. So he's probably fine with them. Um, this is a prototype of the slain statue by Pop Culture Shock PCS Collectibles. It is limited edition. It is a sideshow exclusive. So we're the only ones who are going to get it, and there are only 100 pieces. That is super limited, guys, for a statue. Um, this is a quarter scale statue, a pol and it's made of polystone. Mm -hmm. It comes with a battlefield diorama base. This is an early prototype, so it is highly fragile. We're showing it to you kind of askew, so you can see kind of the amount of space it takes up instead of the full portrait. But the portrait is, I mean, you're looking at the portrait. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a massive uh, piece of hardware here. Yes. Um, the exclusive is the swap out. Um, 
sword, Excalibur. So we're looking at the exclusive right now because no normally in the collector edition he will Brand have. Biter. Yeah. How, did you? He just he knows. He's like it's Brain Biter. It obviously it has to be the. It says uh, Trusty Axe Brain Biter. That's courtesy of your notes. Um, and it comes with a certificate of authenticity. So it is available for pre-order right now at side.show slash slain. That's side.show slash slain. That's a lot of S's. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sideshow Live. Thank you so much to the War Master, Josh Barnett, for coming in and talking to us about Slain, uh, like what, like a month ago? But uh, that was an amazing show. It was so much fun to be able to chat with him about one of his favorite characters. And now we get to talk about another set of our favorite characters. We have a very, very special episode. Today we are doing a bit of time traveling into the ultimate world of nostalgia. Any kid who grew up in the 90s remembers the theme song to a very special show. Whenever it comes on, we would just light up and still do, still do. It's still a thing to this day. <laughs> like it, everyone lights up when they hear that song. So right now we have in the house, the writers, directors, producers, showrunners, anybody, you know, anybody who's anybody from X-Men, the animated series. Hi! <laughs> hey! Woo! So, um, thank you guys for being here. I'm a little bit nervous because you guys are like my childhood. So, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of nostalgia happening right now. Thank I'm you so for happy. Having us. Yes. So, um, let's go ahead and introduce. Start with Len. <laughs> um, I'm Len Yuli. I don't know which camera to look at. Yep. Here we are. <laughs> right there. I'm Len Yuli, and uh, I was a, a writer of three episodes on the X Men series, and I've been doing animation before and since for 30 some years. Uh, I wrote the uh, uh, first episode that used uh, Bobby Iceman Drake called Cold Comfort. Oh and God. I did uh, uh, the Nightcrawler episode and the follow up to that, which was called Bloodlines. So. It's <laughs> <laughs> like Nightcrawler's like, I love Nightcrawler. Yeah. Well, I'm rather fond of him. <laughs> I know, he's anyway. great. I'm Julia Leewald. I was one of the writers for X Men the Animated Series. Um, did the uh, first part of Days of Future Past Part 1 that brought in Bishop rather than the Kitty Pride character there and had fun with that. <laughs> and, uh, I'm that, learning uh, this as we go, so it's pretty exciting for me to be like, like I knew you guys were writers, but I didn't know like which episodes, and now I'm going like, I remember that episode. Well, good, I remember that episode. Good. <laughs> um, got to write some other episodes and also got to pitch some stories, including one that became uh, the story Beauty and the Beast, which is one of my personal favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like just crying over <laughs> all the X-Men goodness happening right now. Um, hi, Eric. Hi. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm Eric Leewald, and I got to hire wonderful people like this to write the 76 episodes, and I was the supervising story editor, which now is called a showrunner. And so I and a, a dear friend of mine from college, uh, Mark Edens, laid out the first 26 stories and was just in charge of making sure that everybody kind of kept on the same page, even though they were very, very, very different people. So uh, if there was a problem with the script, uh, it was my responsibility. <laughs> That's amazing. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. I'm still going to try to calm down. Uh, we will have Larry here shortly. Yeah. Um, this is Los Angeles. There's a bit of a traffic thing that happens. So whenever Larry comes in, he's welcome to just jump on. Right um, and Larry was a producer and director for X-Men, the animated series as well. So we have so many questions for you guys, sure. and I'm already watching them come in from the audience as well. So it's, it's happening. We're, we're such big fans here at Sideshow. As you can see, we have our X-Men animated series <laughs> statues right here. And by the way, Rogan Gambit should be here, except they're already sold out. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, like they went. So these are Kotobukiya 10th scale oh my god, statues, yeah. and they're amazing based on X-Men 90s. Yes. Yes. And the Rogan Gambit one just it was a two pack like Storm and Bishop like over here. Uh -huh. And they just gone. Gone. Uh, because oh Rogan Gambit. We've yeah. already we've already like in the lobby beforehand we were discussing <laughs> how Rogan Gambit are Super are so dear to so many, the hearts of so many fans that, um... The Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Yeah, I know, oh, they're, they're the Gaga. Nice. That, nice. that, yes, exactly. That they're, works. There's yeah. something about them together that yeah. just works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you guys were the ones who brought them together. They weren't together in the comics right. before. So, 
Thank you. <laughs> so how did each of, how did each of you come to work on X Men the animated series? Well, well okay. going going on the Wayback Machine, we all met at Disney TV Animation. Oh wow! Uh, right. For the Disney Afternoon, late eighties. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we were what? working yeah. on Ducktales, Tailspin, what? all that stuff. Chippendales Rescue what? Rangers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ju Julia, Julia wrote fourteen of the Rescue Rangers, more than anybody. Chippendales Rescue Rangers. That was where I. When got. I was little, I my mom made me a purple jumpsuit that I would we, wear. I was gadget. She was gadget. And I would wear <laughs> gadget. Little little mouse ears in my purple jumpsuit and watch that show. I still own the entire series of Rescue Rangers on DVD. Okay. Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll our people. Our people. Yeah. Our people. Yeah. yeah. It's, so, 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 in some, some of the episodes, she's listed as Julia Roberts, because that was her maiden name. Oh. On the original don't, Julia Roberts. Don't, don't, oh, I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. So you guys worked on the Disney app? I'm sorry, I hijacked your question. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. You know, but, but that's how we all met each other. That's right. And then uh, when, when we all... Then when, we, when they let basically everybody go, we all started <laughs> work, work, well, working well. for other, for other uh, companies, and I'd worked for the uh, people, the Fox people, on a couple shows. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on the last season, I was a supervising guy on the last season of Beetlejuice from from Margaret Lash and Sidney. Like, like, so, <laughs> so that's that's how the the not literally the night before they're gonna have forty people in there with, you know, Stan Lee and all the Marvel people and Haim Saban and all the Fox this huge group of people say we're gonna gonna make X Men happen. It was the launch meeting at ten in the morning. That the night before I got a call from them saying, Oh by the way we decided we're gonna have you run X Men. You're gonna be. You're gonna. You're gonna develop the show, and you're gonna be the story editor. <laughs> and I said, oh, that, "That's that's great, guys. That's great." And I'm whispering to Julia, "Now, who are the X Men?" We can <laughs> <laughs> so there was no internet. There was no I, no one to call. I just had to go to the meeting and smile and nod. And people like Larry Houston, who had memorized every mm -hmm. one of the comic books, mm -hmm. um, I'd read other Marvel uh, properties. I've you know, read some DC, but I just I didn't know them. But mm -hmm. They just, I guess, thought that my uh, tone was right for the show. Well, they were cl they clearly saw something, and they were clearly correct. So I read them very fast. I read yeah. the books very fast. <laughs> and, and then, Len, you were brought on board. Well, um, I was still at Disney when the show began. Uh -huh. And then subsequently, when I was no longer at Disney, thank goodness, Eric and Julia were there to catch me. Oh. Uh, and so I was in, I guess, fourth season? Yeah. And then got a chance, and since I had grown up reading comic books, right. uh, DC though mostly. It's okay. Um, but I sort of knew that lingo too, so I went from funny animals to people in tights, <laughs> and it all worked out. Uh, we need and, to quote that. I went yeah. from funny animals to people and, in tights, and, it, and, and I, f you know, felt at home in the world. And uh, fortunately, Eric had this enormous—I don't know who wrote it at the time—this encyclopedia of Marvel characters, mm. so I could be brought up to speed rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And so then I was brought in to do freelance on three of the episodes that I mentioned, and it was a terrific experience because, as you're well aware, <laughs> Eric was running a show that was not a kiddie show. It was not just for the under four set. They were doing adult melodrama and it was done brilliantly and they cared about their characters and that's the thing that makes it such an unusual show. That and it, it was about how we how people feel. Right. And it, it actually is why the show has lasted the test of time. Exactly. Because you can still watch that show and it's still one of the I think it's the best version of the Phoenix saga out there. It's the best version. Where is he? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> um, same with Days of Future Past. It's like yeah. the best version of the Sentinels. Like like all of the, everything from the comics that came onto the show was done perfectly and with such care to the fan base and to the characters and to who they are emotionally. And that's why, even as an adult, I can still watch the show and like connect to exactly what I'm watching. Hi, Larry. So, how's it going? Oh. Welcome. <laughs> so sorry that it was a little oh. bit stressful this morning. I am quite embarrassed not to be here on time. It's totally fine. It's we just totally got started. We, we just got started. Yeah. Just got started. We were so. only in the second season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my That's God. amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Larry. Um, can you introduce yourself to the camera and just uh, what Which it one? is? <laughs> what, That's a good one. What it was. Oh, hi. <laughs> 
Uh, hi, I'm uh, Larry Houston. I'm the producer director of the X Men. I've also been the director of like other shows like uh, GI Joe, uh, Captain Planet, uh, Fantastic Four, Johnny Quest, um, Kid and Play. Um, what's another one? The Karate Kid, and and, also, <laughs> and even Care Bears. I mean, I've done a little bit of everything. Care Bears. Yeah, I know Care Bears. Yeah. Some of us worked on strawberry shortcake. Oh <laughs> we, we all did. We, we yeah. run the gamut. We, we, we all we all worked on uh, strawberry shortcake, mm -hmm. Madeline, and Winnie the Pooh. Oh That's my true. God! Yeah. 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 I had I was totally terrified of the peculiar purple pie man of Porcupine Peak. Like, I was so terrified. That's the alliteration of him. that got I was just right? so yeah. scared of him yeah. as a kid because he was like all gross and like you know, <laughs> I just really didn't like him. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay, so perfect time for um, Larry. Um, how did you come to work on X Men: The Animated Series? Uh, I started kind of way back in like 1980, in the 1980s, where when we were trying to get the X Men on the air, Margaret Lesh with Margaret Lesh and Stan Lee, oh. we did. We came up. They found the financing financing to do a pilot called Pride of the X Men. Mm -hmm. It was myself, Rick Holberg, and Will Minio. And we, we put together a pilot to try and get the X-Men started way back when. And it was a half hour pilot. We got Japanese animation. We got the best script we thought we had at the time. And we put it out there. And right then, it only had two, three networks, CBS, NBC, ABC. Mm -hmm. Nobody was interested in the show. What? It was like, it kind of, we did our best and it didn't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah you, got, you got to understand, there had never, there had never been a Marvel movie, which is hard to imagine now. Uh, yeah. That's there had been 10 or 11 attempts at Marvel TV shows that were, you know, like the thing meets the Flintstones. Yeah, and like the <laughs> Spider-Man show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, they, where they have pets. Yeah. Hollywood just didn't get uh, X-Men at all. And Margaret Lesh had tried for seven or eight years yeah. to, to get them to buy it. And they just said, no, it's... It's a tiny audience. It's just a few geeks yeah. in their 40, basements. Forty thousand people read the comics. Who's right. yeah, we the show? Show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Million. Yeah. three million. Yeah. So this will yeah. never work. It'll never work. And then when Margaret became suddenly found herself as head of Fox Kids, she Which said, was brand new. "I'm going to make the X Men." And her boss didn't yeah. see it. Her boss said, "Look, if this fails, I'm going to fire you." Okay, I'm still going to do it. We wrote the first script. Wow. Yeah. All the all the all the uh, advertisers and and TV stations around the country that were going to run it looked at. What the heck is this? No kid's gonna watch this adult stuff. Yeah, and right. there was, there's, like, little do they know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole generation so, of us. So, <laughs> yeah. so as it was talking, they only hired all the creative people for the first 13 episodes for one season. Yeah, and when we were it. done with our work, we were all let go. Yeah. Right. Thinking that it just was never gonna it was, it was gonna never be, gonna play. It was gonna be one and gone. And yeah. so three months later <laughs> yeah. when it comes on and becomes the number one hit. They had to embarrassingly call us. Can you come back? Yeah. Please. I'm trying to like imagine what <laughs> my childhood would have been like. Like I could be in. I could not be sitting in this chair right now. You know, like I could be an entirely different person because like between the X Men animated series and Batman the animated mm -hmm. series, that's right. what got me into a comic book shop when I was eight years old. Right. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Millions of people. Yeah. In fact, we were the estimate was we were told, look, when you do this show, eighty-five percent of the people that turn on won't know what a mutant is, won't know so? what an X-Men is. <laughs> so, so you have to be very, so you have to be very. So, yeah. so I was like, I saw like you know people with superpowers. Like, what else did I mean? I mean, yeah, I, the rest exactly. of it fell into place. Yeah. I know. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. I guess this, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but what type of research was done to get the show going from, you know, uh, comic books and... Human encyclopedia. Human, I've right? heard that they actually yeah. mentioned that before you came on. They were like, well, Larry, yeah. you know everything. Uh, I, I pretty much grew up a uh, comic book geek all of my life. And when it came to the X-Men, I knew all of the X-Men stuff inside and out. So when there was something that needed some knowledge about the show, you know, even Stan would ask me because he didn't create the characters. I would tell him what this character did, what this character did, and stuff like that. Wow. And I would, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you know, people forget there, were, there was a Stanley Jack Kirby version in the right. early 60s, which was a right. bunch of white teenage Americans in blue suits, <clears throat> and then it died because it was not a very strong book and for five years, and then it was brought back to life by Len Wein, and mm -hmm. Chris Claremont yes. and John Byrne. Mm -hmm. right. Len was given the, and the reason Wolverine's Canadian is that Len was told, oh, we want to make the uh, kind of an international cast. So the, so start thinking up 
uh, mutants from other countries. Mm -hmm. So that that week he put a Canadian Wolverine in a Hulk episode, a Hulk, Hulk book, mm -hmm. and right. that's the origin of Wolverine. So we got Storm from Africa, and he got the uh, Nightcrawler from Germany, Nightcrawler, yeah, and yeah. Ru Russian Colossus. So that's yeah. why we have a United Nations of X Men is because, right. and and that goes back all things. There was a, an accountant at Marvel, which was a small, much smaller company then, that said, you know, the book died here, but the reprints sell well overseas. So they made the creative decision, well, if it's selling overseas, let's make them international. They're, an accountant a, a little gave us a little the international X-Men. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. Accountant, who knew? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is... How does it feel to have added to a comic book legacy oh. such as the X-Men? Larry? Oh, I, I feel very blessed and very happy that we were able to accomplish what we did because we've been able to, to give the uh, audience the entertainment that we knew that they would want, but we had to fight so many people to get it on the air that we knew there was an audience for it, but we couldn't get past the gatekeepers, you know, yeah. who kept saying no, 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 no. And finally, when we got the shot with Margaret, you know, she gave us the, not carte blanche, but she basically said, go for it. And she had faith in myself and Eric's and Julia and Will Minio and Rick Holberg and, 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 and you. And me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> A little faith. <laughs> Fewer episodes she, to have faith in. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, we got it on the air. And um, the thing you got to remember back in the first season, they thought we were going to be one and gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, there were no computers, no likes, dislikes and stuff. So pretty much... We had to do the show based upon our, our gut instincts as to what makes a good story. And we had no idea until Julia, sometime near the end of the oh, season, yeah. she went to the networks to find out, do the kids want, like the show? We like about no six, six or eight weeks in, you went in. Yeah, there was no feedback back, no immediate feedback. No. Right, and, right. And uh, it was, oh, yeah, we're getting feedback, and it took me into a hallway. And if you can picture those big sort of white, milky cartons that mailmen put their, you know, those big mm. ones, down both sides of the corridor, stacked to the ceiling, were postcards from kids from the Fox Kids Club, if you may remember those. Ways. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was one of those sure. kids. Yeah. So, <laughs> she saw they, your card. Yes, <laughs> you saying they love the X Men. So, like, a whole that, hallway full of postcards from yeah. little kids from all over the country saying how that's much where, they love the X Men. And that's when we finally ceiling. started finding out that, you know, the kids like what we're they doing. They like us. The they audience they like us. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm trying not to cry. Like, <laughs> like, I'm just going to sit here and not cry. Um, so, uh, do you guys have a favorite storyline that you were a part of? Sure. Larry? Larry? Uh, there are a couple. I mean, um, there's the one I always bring up, which is the, the rogue story. But there's also the time travel story. There's Beauty and the Beast episode. There's... Um, uh, I'm so Oh. <laughs> no, I know exactly. Julia oh. mentioned the Beauty and the Beast oh, episode, right. and I was yeah. like, ah! <laughs> anyway, go ahead. There's, there's always Days of Future Paths, yes. which we did, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously the Phoenix and Dark Phoenix stuff. We mm -hmm. had a, there's a lot of stories that we're, we're I, very proud of. To this day, of. when someone asks me to explain to them the Dark Phoenix, Phoenix Dark Phoenix storyline, I still right. give them the episodes. Of, I just just watch this. Just spend like a couple hours watching this, and that's right. you know comic book history. It's the best way it's ever been told. Uh, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, those are those are my, some of my favorites. There's a lot of them, well, but those are the, the overall. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I got a chance to write Nightcrawler. I mean, just in terms of a, a good action show, the mm -hmm. the thing I did with uh, Cold Comfort with Bobby Drake was mm -hmm. was fun. But Nightcrawler was kind of unusual because, as you know, the character has profound faith, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. something you don't see depicted. Certainly in children's television, in, I mean, yes, there's Davy and the Goliath right. and the Veggie Tales and all those mm -hmm. things, but and those things came later. But to do this in a superhero action show was peculiar, mm -hmm. and the fact that we had wonderful people backing us up, our standards and practices person, was saying, yeah, go ahead, because by that point, four seasons in, they had earned her trust, and she said, you're doing this? And so we did this extraordinary episode, which uh, was, and I was thrilled to be cast, and again, this is all about casting, mm -hmm. to write this episode because nothing like that had ever been done. And we got a chance to do something that really moved people. And when we go to these conventions now, 
people come up and say, this is the first time I was able to talk with my family about something uh, that mattered to oh. me. And, and it, it just, it how touches lovely. you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody, when, yeah. whenever we go to these things, we hear how much, like the, the, the way you're reacting, we hear how much <laughs> the show yeah. touched people. Yeah. And, and the, it was part of their childhood. And it, sometimes the stories are very personal and very moving. And we're just thrilled that, because, you know, we sit in our rooms and we type. Yeah. But then we go and we hear people say how much it meant to them, and we're like, wow, thank you. Well, to be a part of the X-Men is also an incredibly special thing, because the X-Men are the ones who, who people tell them they're not normal, you know? Right. And, and so the, I feel like the reason that you wind up with so many personal stories is because the X-Men help people feel like they belong somewhere or find find yeah. their school for gifted youngsters like that that might be you know like here at sideshow or somewhere <laughs> at a convention <laughs> or like you know what i mean like that's yeah. they're they're a tribe and they created their own tribe when yeah. there was none and so that's i think to to me why the x-men have such a profound emotional reaction from what, so many what people what preteen or teenager doesn't feel like exactly. they're an outsider exactly and here's a group of outsiders who have circumstances have brought together some of whom have had to face terrible personal uh, yeah. loss and you know families yeah. torn apart and all that sort of thing mm -hmm. so there you know it's like oh yeah i recognize myself and that's the right. best kind of story where yeah. you there's a character that brings you into the story. Absolutely. Yeah. They happen to have superhero powers, but each one of them... Who doesn't? Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but each one of them is, has got their own personal issues. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, the fact that we were able to tell those stories in a Saturday morning context is, to me, still amazing. Yeah. And favorite, exciting. Favorite? Uh, well, Fan of Beauty and the Beast, <laughs> just because that was one of the stories I got to come up with. And Stephanie Matheson uh, wrote that script. Um, and I'm going to pass it to Eric because my oh, personal yeah. favorite after w is the two-parter One Man's Worth, which, which deals with the concept of what if Xavier had not existed long enough to form the X-Men. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it's, my, it's my favorite, too. And my personal bit in that is Storm and Wolverine. Oh. Okay, all right, go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. this, you know, when you're looking over five years and 76 stories, you, know, you come up with some that are okay, you come up with some that you maybe wished you had worked on a little more, and there's a handful that just seem to like pop out and say, this is a perfect story for me and for, for this, this show. Mm -hmm. And the idea that we could tell a story that showed why the X-Men exist in the first place. I mean, and the way to show that is show them, show a, a different timeline where they had, didn't exist, where someone went back, killed Xavier in college, and there's never an X-Men. So the opening sequence is you meet Wolverine, meet Wolverine and Storm, and someone asked them about going back and say, helping the X-Men, who were the X-Men? I mean, X-Men, if they didn't exist, the world went to hell. And there, I, you know, we stole from a couple shows, like uh, It's a Wonderful Life or mm -hmm. Sitting on the Edge of Forever. I'm but it, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. there's that measure of time in there. But, yeah. but that little kernel of why do the X-Men exist was the most satisfying story that I think I worked on of all of them. That's and amazing. then seeing it, because it comes <clears throat> in the fourth season, uh, but seeing if you're watching it closely, Storm and Wolverine are a married couple. That's the only, and he's wearing a wedding ring, she's wearing a wedding ring. Wait, they're yeah. married and they're together and they're profoundly in love. And they're the perfect couple. <laughs> well, the per <laughs> suddenly go four seasons and they are the perfect couple. Why aren't they? The and then the fact that they're willing to risk that because mm -hmm. you don't know if they're going to get together again and right. we realize they don't and it's right. just heartbreaking yeah. Yeah. but they sacrifice that for the greater good and yeah. wow. they earn, I think the show earned that moment. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, what were some of the challenges about putting together the X-Men for a Saturday morning audience? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is <laughs> a <laughs> big question, right? Yeah. Well, that's that's, that's, that's a start. Yeah, How much time you got? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've got these 20 some 30 somethings oh. who have superpowers and fighting people that we had to make sure were even more powerful than they were. So <laughs> there was a challenge to them that could destroy mm. cities, and it's kids' shows, so they can't hit each other, and there can't be any blood, and there can't. And, and it's just there are all these lists of things that within a kids' show you're not supposed to do. And if you're trying to be serious about these people and their powers and their yearnings and what they wanted for the world, you had to have ridiculously intense drama to replace the violence and the sex that we obviously couldn't have be part of the show. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. To that end, uh, 
very early on. Uh, okay, broadcast standards and practices. A woman named Avery Coburn. Wonderful. Yeah. Save yeah. the show. You don't Save hear much praise heaped on, on what you call the network censors, but that yeah. woman was responsible for allowing X Men to be the show it was, which is again a tremendous thing. Wow. Yeah. But um, I'm going to mention Morph. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So, 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 there's actually yeah. there's a yeah. question in like, from the audience questions which I haven't even gotten to yet, but there is a question but, about more. more. Speaking that, of Saturday morning, yeah, we, yeah. We, problems. We, we we made sure that he had that. We, we the first thing we said, Mark Eden's I when we're doing the first thirteen episodes and talking with Larry and Will, yeah. we need someone to die. We need an X Men, not just a, a, a someone on the side. We need an X Men to die in the first story to show what the stakes are for these people. Mm -hmm. So it's not play acting, it's not play fighting, it's real. And I mean, it's so many stories that start that way. I mean, you know, Bambi. Mm. <laughs> you know, oh. Come on. Oh. So, and of course. I was like, I was like, oh. you know, I think, think of Finding Nemo. Don't tell us yeah. how it ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah Finding right. every, every powerful Disney story starts with somebody dying. Uh, but, and, yeah. but this is kids' TV, so they said, no, 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 no. And then, then we talked them through it, and they said, okay, we trust you. Well, we'll see what you can do. It has to right. be off screen. But yeah, So Morph was created to be the person who was added to the team to kill in the first episode. And we right. were, you're supposed to stay dead, and he did stay dead. <laughs> he did stay dead for one season. For one season, and we went off, and we came back, and they showed six or seven episodes, and it became a hit. And of course, in their wisdom, Fox does a but gets a bunch of kids together for a focus group and says, "Who's your favorite X Men from the first season?" Eighty percent morph. morph. <laughs> so, so we get the yeah. phone call saying, <clears throat> um, "I know you worked to kill this guy, but please, please, mm -hmm. can we have him back?" Yeah. The question is, did you guys know that morph would have such an impact on the viewers? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> we knew we were creating them to be. Uh, have an attachment to the characters, mm -hmm. but we didn't know it was going to have that lasting of an impact. Mm -hmm. The uh, the original uh, comic books had a character called Thunderbird, which was an American Indian yeah. character who gets who dies in the first I think three or four issues mm -hmm. of the book, and Morph does that same thing. We we decided not to do the American Indian to introduce the first American Indian character and then kill him off, you know. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> So it wouldn't, not a, it wouldn't look so good. So we went back to the, I think, issues 48, 47 back there. And there was a character called Changeling who was created to yeah. die in one issue. And so I took the look, the look of the, the way he looked, that became Morph. But we couldn't use the word Changeling because DC had Changeling in the Teen Titans. Mm -hmm. So it became Morph. And that's where that character came from for the show. That's amazing. If you go back and watch the first, the Night of the Sentinels, part one and two, mm -hmm. when they come off uh, the Blackbird after having lost more from the battle, speaking of Saturday morning, Wolverine comes up and oh, he sucker, he <laughs> sucker punches them really hard. Yeah, <laughs> but gets, gets yeah. Cyclops right in the gut. Uh, yeah, with that, and says, "Next time I use the claws." And that one punch is the one time you're going to see you know any that kind we of were allowed. That we person we were allowed. We, yeah, had to That's really negotiate funny. that. Yeah. yeah, and that was a big deal to express his 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 rage and his yeah. pain. Yeah. But that was a big deal for Saturday morning. I'm as like well. wondering if, because I've never liked Cyclops. Oh, I'm <laughs> wondering if this is why. Like, have we just gotten to the root of why I've hated Cyclops my whole life? Because, <laughs> like, Wolverine's one of my favorites, and I do vividly remember him, like, punching Cyclops. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's for a different episode. Where we <laughs> we'll um, be back. <laughs> um, what were some of your favorite Easter eggs to include in oh. the series? Oh, Larry. <laughs> Larry has he has a whole crate of Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah. I I I I, I uh, included almost I included all the Easter eggs into the show. Um, basically, I I remember as a kid reading the books in the '60s, where Stan was trying to cross cross promote the books and Spider-Man you might see Thor in one panel and Thor you might see you know one of the other characters just for one panel and so I remember that enthusiasm I had as a kid could translate into the show and also create antici uh, anticipation for the kids because if they see a, a, a cameo of a character in one episode the next week what's the next one everybody's you know wondering what other character is going to appear mm -hmm. and I, but I also would what I would do is uh, with the cameos I would um only included if it didn't interfere with their stories. Oh, okay. You know, if it was, you know, if the characters would be on the side or something, it would not be part of the original composition to distract you from it. But mm -hmm. if you were, you know, Marvel uh, right. fan, you'd pick up on it that this is this guy, this is this guy. 
And so for me, I, the favorite ones I think I can remember is that, you know, I had uh, The Watcher was an alien, mutant alien on the moon or something like that. Oh, yeah, let them know, because you had to oh. call him something different. Oh, that's he, right. He put, he put Spider-Man in one early, and they said, no, you can't, we can't use him. We don't have the rights. Because uh -huh. right. he didn't have the rights to any of the other characters. Yeah. So yeah. he just start, stopped naming them. Yeah. There was one episode where these guys wrote called Genosha. Uh-huh, Slave Island. And Slave, Slave Island, Island. Slave that's Island. the one. Yeah. And the writer wrote Mutant 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so I, I brought my comic books to work. And I told, because <laughs> there was no internet, remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put it on a Xerox machine. I said, okay, make this blob, make this sunfire, make this, you know, <laughs> these characters. That's so you know, And so I populated the world with uh, Marvel characters, but I kept the original names. In one, two, three, four, five. In the yeah. storyboards, yes. In the yeah. storyboards and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, legal would know. Yeah, they had no imagination. That's amazing. <laughs> well, <laughs> Norse, <laughs> Norse mutant? Norse mutant. Oh, yes. Norse, Norse, mutant, with Norse mutant. mutant with hammer. Yeah. Yes. 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 Norse mutant with yes. hammer. Phoenix, oh my. Dark Phoenix, when they're up there, and you, yeah, and you see the Watcher, and you see it's, Doctor Strange, yeah. and you see He's, Thor, yeah. and you yeah. see Spider-Man. And see Spider-Man. For a split second. Oh, yeah. It was in risk. Yeah, I snuck Spider-Man in. I think it was in, I can't remember, Phoenix or Dark Phoenix, but the world's going to hell in a handbasket, and I drew this scene of a, of a chimney, and you see the shadow of Spider-Man come in, and then in the foreground you see, it, you see this hand come down, all you see is this much. <laughs> and the web amazing. comes out, and then the next shot you see the webbing save somebody. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's amazing. And so I, I got a chance to put him in, and this was just a mutant arm. Yeah. And, and De Deadpool and Black Panther. Oh, that's right. Both of those oh, God, that's right, yeah. First uh, Black Panther. I, I did right? the first animated Black Panther ever, wow. uh, when I think it was Sanctuary Part 1 and 2, because Magneto goes to to collect some mutants. Uh -huh. So I figured, okay, let me throw in some cameos. Oh, okay. and so, oh my gosh, they're perfect. Yes. There you go. Oh, that's there right there. Yeah, oh, there's, that's no, right there's right the there. Norseman mm -hmm. on the roof yes. with a hammer. <laughs> yeah. The Norseman, there, there's the, the Watcher, what's not called the Watcher. Uh, he's an alien observer. Alien, yeah. yeah. And there's uh, Doctor Strange. I think uh, he's not called Doctor Strange in, in the model sheet I sent to him. Yeah. <laughs> magic, guy. Yeah. Magic, guy. <laughs> magic guy. Magic guy. Magic guy, yeah. Oh my God. And, that's, uh, and it's so but you couldn't get away with this now. Because oh, now no, everyone knows no, who all these characters no. are. <laughs> no, a lot of a lot of, is bliss. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. No, a lot of what I tell the uh, the 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 fans who come talk to us is that a lot of decisions we made that were made in the show were made by this small group. And you couldn't do that. Today, right. there's so many cooks in the kitchen that yeah. we couldn't do this again. Yeah, you couldn't replicate it, this. Yeah, Mar Marvel didn't have a final say on the stories or the dialogue. They they would suggest, and we could just say, no, sorry, we like it this way. And they were based in New York at that time, and we were all at Los small Angeles. Small companies wow. and, and right. coming out of bankruptcy or going into. They were bankruptcy? going into bankruptcy. They, yeah, they did that in '96. We were '92 through '97. So during the show, wow. they went bankrupt. But right. speaking of Easter eggs, my absolute personal favorite is uh, we talk Beauty and the Beast, mm -hmm. where Beast falls in love with a woman named Carly. Mm -hmm. who's it. The point is, several, several seasons later, yeah. he's, he just is at a computer, at the keyboard, and oh, if right. you know what you're looking for, there's a picture of Carly taped to the screen, and it just yeah. says, Love Carly, Carly on it. Aww. You had me paying I attention. To, I, I know. Need to go back and, <laughs> <laughs> and it goes yeah. by that fast, wow. but that was exactly the kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I was trying to just, you know, yeah. connect in the episode mm -hmm. so they weren't totally disconnected, that kind of like a little thread to yeah. connect yeah. episodes together. Mm -hmm. Attention to detail. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's incredible. Um, who's your favorite character? <laughs> I, you writer, as a writer, it was just a delight to write for Beast because he was the smartest guy in the room yeah. and we all wanted to out do each other and prove that we were the smartest people <laughs> 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 by trying to come up with the, the cleverest That's quote, amazing. the most, you know, that. So, so Beast was tremendous fun to write for. Mm -hmm. Uh, my usual quip is uh, Submariner, but that's that's a, that's a deep dive. Oh, oh <laughs> but, uh, look at that! Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I think writing writing, writing for the episode for uh, Iceman was fun because it's you know, interesting uh, father son dynamic yeah. and all sorts of complexity and I mean you know it's such a rich world you could ch choose any of the characters and right. say oh that would be good and that mm -hmm. would be fun right. so. You know, you're uh, uh, just lucky to have a chance to do any of this, yeah. really. Yeah, well, I, I had deep empathy for Charles Xavier mm -hmm. because I had, you know, over the course of five years, 17, 18 different writers mm -hmm. writing on the show for me. And so I felt like I was the father figure trying to keep this all straight. Mm -hmm. Hurting <laughs> yeah. yes. Hurting yeah. cats. Keeping it all straight. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so he, yeah. He, uh, he, he meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess for me, you know, as an artist, I 
Wolverine was was the easiest guy to draw. Mm -hmm. So you just show him, you know, angry coming at you. So <laughs> as an artist, you know, it's Wolverine. And as a complex character, I guess it's going to be Rogue. You know, because she's got all of the stuff, ha hang ups and stuff going on in her head. Totally. So it's kind of like duality between those two characters. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to do a quick right. little plug ah, for Eric's okay. book right here. So, what was it like to put together a project like previously on it, on the X Men, mm -hmm. and what do you hope fans take away from your book? Well, this was two years, and it was wonderful for me because I got to interview all the cast who they were in Toronto. They were 3,000 miles away, so they would record and we'd get an audio cassette, so, so how long ago it was, wow. and give notes, and, and then they'd re-record. So we, even though we had written you know, 76 stories for them, we'd never met them. Right. Oh my God! We so, still haven't so, met them. So, so I, so I got, hadn't invented the airplane yet. Yeah. <laughs> Way back. Yeah. So I got to know all of those people, and I got to get back together with all of these people that we would work with, and it was just, it was great because there, there weren't grudges, there weren't, terrible memories, almost to a person, cast, crew, artist, executive, it was the best job they ever had. When it's does a, that ever happen? Yeah, it's just yeah. like, That's it's incredible. like lightning in a bottle, it's <coughs> right. just like everything came together yeah. Yeah. and the right people were rowing the same way, right. just, yeah. Yeah. had the same vision yeah. and fought off all the other people that wanted to change the show enough to where it was able to become successful. And yeah. so writing the book was just was just a pleasure. I mean, it's just re remembering how, uh, great days. Yeah, and how can fans get this book? Oh, okay, There's, you can get it from Amazon, but Amazon. if you want a signed copy, r write the publisher at... Uh, JacobsBrownMediaGroup.com JacobsBrownMediaGroup.com and they will. You can order through them, and Eric will have signed each. I copy. signed a couple thousand for them. Wow. So they've got them. They've got them to send. That's amazing. And if you ever show up at a convention and they happen to be there, yeah. yes. you know sometimes some other writers are there, so more people sign the book. Right, too. <laughs> right. So if you go, if you yeah. find us a con near you, come by. We we'll always have a stack of books there to sell, and then yeah, he's right. More, you'll get yeah. more signatures. Yeah. Wow. But uh, yeah, that's. It's great. We are getting so many audience questions. Oh. <laughs> so do you guys want to just transition into the audience questions, or is there a break that we have? Or I don't think there was a break written in. So let's just sure. go. Yeah, are you guys good? We're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're very um, good. Yeah. Well, first up, there's a lot of questions, like not even questions, just like comments about thanking you all for... Oh. Um, the X Men, like what Weiss Fire, I think is the username, says the X Men made it okay for everyone to be different and helped so many of us find our own people. So kind of thank you. That's so, it, it, yeah. do, it does. Honestly. Yeah. Thank you. Really thank you. Um, and then Ali Marceau says so many kids who are now adults were influenced to become comic fans, which has led to the existence of these movies and be honest, and let's be honest, the MCU, it wouldn't exist without you guys. I, no. We say this all the time. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, yeah, thank you guys. So, we were like that. Thank you, yes. because yeah. that's exactly right. We, this like, was the proof of concept mm -hmm. for the Marvel Universe, and right. they've done wonderful things since, yeah. but if this hadn't existed, who knows? Yeah. I say, this is the bridge. This yeah. is the bridge, yeah. yeah. yeah this is the bridge that we grew up, up with it, and we became the comic fans who are now making the movies. They're all in the, the age group that right. would have watched the yep. show. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And yep. you, probably, you probably heard that when they made the first X-Men movie, they didn't pick up a comic book, they just watched our show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> of course. Yeah. That makes complete sense to me. Um, <clears throat> wow. Okay, so here's a fun question. <laughs> Who is your favorite couple on the show? Oh, well, they listed like, like a whole bunch of options, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm just going to go with who is your favorite couple on the, the show? The couple? I yeah. guess uh, Gambit and Rogue, the way they played uh, off yeah, each other. Yeah, yes. that's the right answer. <laughs> 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 no, but there are, there are other couples, but yes, they're my yeah. favorite. I, I'm answering these questions too. I'm a part of this, so yeah, Gambit and Rogue. Anyway. Well, for me, I, as I said, Storm and Wolverine, and, the, and uh, it's heartbreaking, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, all the episodes I wrote, they were dysfunctional relationships. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure I could answer that properly. I'll, I'll come up with an obscure one because, you know, Wolverine had like seven. Yeah, there are just, quite a few pairings with Wolverine. Yeah, yeah seven, yes, yeah. just, you know, Lady yeah. Death Strike, whatever. Who was the guy from the Mojo verse? My mind just went blank. The, the, the young, the like 23 year old that came, that came through and gave Jubilee her first kiss. Oh, yeah. 
That probably oh, ended that's well. the guy with um, long, long, long shot. Was it long, long shot? shot. Long, long shot gave Jubilee her first kiss. So that is an obscure <laughs> couple. I bet it's not listed there. No, it's not. There's like, there's like a whole bunch with Wolverine, and, and then obviously you know the Cyclops. Right? Yeah. He lived in another universe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. it was fine. That's yeah. amazing. All right, so it's a geography issue. There you go. <laughs> yeah. that's it. Oh my gosh. It. Uh, can you please tell Eric the synopsis that he wrote as a permanent story is on my Instagram. Eric, you are exceptional. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Great compliment there, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's amazing. So, yeah, again, just wanted to stop by and say thank you for my childhood. You all are amazing. <laughs> that's music to our ears. It really, yeah. is. Um, it really is. All yeah. right. I'm like gonna cry, but that's cool. Um, was there any member of the X-Men that you wished you could have brought onto the show as a permanent member of the team? Oh, okay. Um, as a permanent member, probably would have. If we could have, it would have been Colossus. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, you know, what a good one. You know, because he 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 seemed to gel well with with the group. Yeah. Although his powers are duplicated by Rogue. That he would have been a fun character. The other one, I guess, would have been Nightcrawler. I mean, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. it's like you could, you could, you keep, could just keep going, you could just keep yeah. going and adding more mm -hmm. and more to it. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Little behind the scenes tidbit here: you thought it was going to end with season four. That was oh right. The, the order was in, and and, and oh, every right. season, each of us were told, okay, we're only getting you for thirteen more episodes. It, there was never the comfort that it's going to run. Yeah, oh, but, well, let's and, come back. For and that's the months. problem we had back then. Yes, yeah. that and we had no guarantee from one year to another if we were going to be hired back. Yeah. So, so to answer the question, there was actually, it was supposed to end at episode sixty-five, not seventy-six, and it was that big four-parter, uh, beyond good, and beyond evil. good and evil. Yeah. And the whole purpose of that thing was to end the end the series with five X-Men leaving and four new X-Men becoming part of the team. Core team. And that's how it would end. And so all the guest stars in that show... Uh, uh, Bishop. B Bishop. Shard. Sh Bishop and Shard and uh, Archangel and uh, Psylocke. Those four were coming in uh, uh, and Gene and Scott were going off to have a family. Uh, Storm. Uh, Storm was going off somewhere. We had written all this in for five folks to leave and these four to, to stay. 160 page script for four parts. And then we get the call saying, oh, oops, we need 11 more episodes. So you're going to take all that. And all those people that you have coming in, and you set up the whole story so that they would come to Mexico, <coughs> they're just going to say goodbye and leave. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Bad. So we still have, we still have the script where they all leave, and we we have the original script. Oh wow! So that's amazing. If they want to make that, yeah. movie, if they want to make that movie, they can do it. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Um, are there any newer X Men that have been created since the series ended that you would love to add to your team? Oh boy! I have an answer. You do? Oh, I'll go okay. with your answer. Yeah, yeah you answer this one. Like well, everybody, what? everybody who watches the show is gonna know my answer. X twenty three. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 She'd be a great addition to oh, yeah, the story. And she, she would. would fit in with the team. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Love yeah. that's... Uh -huh. Anyway, you guys should answer. For real. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jubilee and she could, you know, become Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got it. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good answer. Good yeah. I like your answer. Okay. Oh. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You're on the team. Yay. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, there you go. Sorry for whoever answered asked that question. <laughs> I hijacked the answer. Um, wow. Okay. I'm a com I know. I'm a comic book artist, and because of this sh show, I married my husband because we both love the show, oh, and wow. we collect characters from this show specifically. Bringing That's people together. I know. That's exactly. what X-Men does. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long did it take, or did you guys have an equivalent of a show Bible, and how long did it take before you could create it? That, Isn't that you? It's actually... Me? Oh. <laughs> it's, actually, it's, it's, it's actually no. this way. Oh. We, yeah, because they were right, they're the writers. Yeah, we, we oh, were, I thought that you, like, you're in, in his brain because of the stack of comics. I, I, I wish. I wish. I, although Larry sent me all the research material that I and, Mar and Mark Edens used to set up the Bible in the first season, first two seasons, neither right. one of us knew the books. And so we had help from people like Larry that knew, that would answer all of our questions really quick. Yeah. It was a really rushed job. Yeah. Batman had been, we were supposed to premiere in September of 92, the same time as Batman. Mm -hmm. They had been in pre-production for a year when we got the green light in February saying, you've got seven months here, um, um, um. They literally asked me, could yeah. you have the Bible and the first 13 stories laid out 
uh, in a week. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so we just, boom, boom, boom. He had Larry, and there's a guy named Robert Skier who, who was who sleeps in X Men pajamas. He gave, <laughs> he gave me a long list of you know here all here here's all the character traits, and Larry gave me the the uh, Marvel Universe. There was a there's a research there was a reference book that yeah, had yeah, all yeah, the yeah, powers yeah, and everything. The handbook and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. there was what I would because we've done lots of shows and, and some Bibles get very long. Cause production Bibles can get 70, 80 pages if you're putting all the detail and then all the pictures oh. in with it. Right. <laughs> I, I, I handed out the first week uh, like a 22 page thing that said uh, the beginning of a Bible or oh. notes to a Bible because I was <laughs> yeah. so embarrassed. Wow. It was wow. so short. And it got passed around and we said, that's fine, that's fine, write the scripts, go. And it was, wow. it was a really rushed job and the budgets were tight. Yeah. And, the, the, and actually there were a lot of uh, production teething problems and that's why the show premiered in January, not in September. Yeah. Because they tried to rush it, they, they, you just they, can't <coughs> rush perfection, <laughs> or even even competency. Apparently, they tried. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Margaret Margaret stood up for us because we were getting we were getting back production from overseas that wasn't up to the quality level that we wanted, and so she she stepped in and told me, "You will deliver the stuff. You will deliver the re retakes, and we'll, you will deliver a good show for us." And she backed the show out instead of being September. She backed it all the way back out into January, which cost her a lot of money. Yeah, the, they had to do reruns. They had to do reruns. Entire oh. fall. And to pay, you know, they had yeah. already people pay commercials on it and everything. It was like a, it was a big cost for them. But mm -hmm. she knew that she wanted the show to have its, the best possible way of surviving. So it, it debuted in January. Mm -hmm. Now the the accidental um, benefit of that is that when we came on in January. All the other shows were just start wearing reruns, oh. so we were the only new show out there in January. So all the eyeballs went to the X Men. It worked oh. out. So it, it worked, worked out. Really nicely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Heather wants to know who's everyone's favorite villain. Oh. Ooh. Um, Hers couple. is Mystique. She just. Wanted oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one, that, the one that's the most fun for me to draw is going to be Mister Sinister. Because I play him like like Dracula coming in and out of the. That's out of the, uh, fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I because of I tried to be uh, true to his costume, uh, but he's got this rooster tail cape. <laughs> he's got rib cost you know rib lines all over the damn place, and um, <laughs> when you have all those type of details, you know you don't. If you try and make him do this or this, you know the animators, you're just going to kill the animator. Yeah. So what I did was, I, whenever the storyboards came in, I would just change them and just have them like come in and out of black, maybe on a close-up, and then he would be talking to you, and you cut to this person, when you come back to him, he's over there. Oh, and when you come back tricks. to him, maybe yeah. he's over there. Yeah. I never let him walk anywhere. Yeah. That's awesome. And then when he finishes his lines or whatever he's going to do, he just walked back into the shadows. So it made him creepier. Yeah. It yeah. made him creepier, yeah. 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 for real. So it was fun to try and create a new atmosphere you know, the, the atmosphere around Sinister, which was different from Magneto, different from Apocalypse mm -hmm. and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So for me, it was like he was more fun yeah. to yeah. play with. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I would say Mystique, absolutely. Mystique. Uh, you're, you're, yeah, you're, Heather. Mm -hmm. yeah, Heather is right. Mm -hmm. uh, fascinating <laughs> character, damaged. Uh, you understand why she's so awful, but boy, is she <clears> awful. <throat> She has done everything she could to hurt everyone else because in deep inside, she's also just a wreck. Yeah. So a fascinating character to write. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah. Um, apocalypse with that, and this goes back to... Uh, the voice. The voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an actor named John Colico <coughs> was the voice of Apocalypse, and we didn't realize this until years later, which breaks my heart, but John Colico was the very first Klingon in Star Trek, the original Holy series. Yes. We didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> Do you know yeah. when, he, when he's down there with Kirk on the planet of yeah. peaceful people, yeah. and their, their ships are up there and they can't fight, and he's going to make, I am going to make your mind a vegetable <laughs> I, with my brain scanner. That's John Colicos. That's John Colicos. was the first yeah. Klingon, and he's also our apocalypse. Yeah. Same guy. <laughs> yeah. I'll find it for you in the book. If <laughs> yeah, believe me. No, I Page absolutely believe you. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's like, because I'm like a huge Trekkie too, so I'm like, yeah. what is happening? That, yeah. That, like, oh! Yeah. And, that and, was him. and by the way, they didn't even know if that show was going to work either. Yeah, so that's true. That's that's true. true. That's that's kind of a, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. so he's kind of my favorite too, but 
the, I think the relationship between Charles and Magneto oh, okay. is so okay. special that it kind of lifts Magneto to heights for me that you it. normally wouldn't Magneto have. Was my <laughs> <laughs> um, so this actually is a really good question. Who do each of you think is right, Magneto or oh. Xavier? Oh, there you go. oh yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have to. Like, I have to go along with it, uh, Xavier. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sure. It, yeah. It, can I point out that when you had the order for the first thirteen, and you didn't know if it was going to go beyond that, yeah. uh, you and Mark made the conscious decision rather than have like bad uh, mutant of the week for e for the X Men episodes, the the use of the Sentinels who were made by the humans. So you set up the human mm -hmm. people who hated the mutants just being because more of the villainous, mutants. and so that you would see the hu see that that tension rather the tension between. We just had a tension between 13 different mutants the first season. You wouldn't have got a sense of how mutants and humans were different or, or, right. or why there was an issue between the two groups. So we very much tried to make it sentinel human problem and had Magneto almost be, you know, like a good guy, a friend, an ally. He offers, if you mm -hmm. want to come join me. So, so that keeping those two the part, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that was... Yeah. Who's the bigger monster? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, and I, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. We, we know yeah. we had a lot of, I know people that think Magneto is, I don't, it's weird, obviously we're sympathetic to Charles Xavier, and that's the way mm -hmm. we want the world to be, yes. but Magneto <laughs> wasn't wrong, Yeah. he was, okay. you know, he, everything he told them, that was made of a great villain to write, because right. he could right. look at the X-Men and say, you know, Charles is deluded, this is what the world is reacting to. When they see you, they're afraid, and they've got a right to be afraid, mm -hmm. and if you want to survive, you've got to come with me. And he, and, and he wasn't lying, he wasn't tricking them. No. He, was, he was telling the truth. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, when we had the first season, the last episode that we thought we, we had was 13, I think it was called yeah. the uh, Final Decision. Final Decision. Decision, mm -hmm. yeah. Where we had or, like tons of Sentinels coming after the X-Men. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the of the uh, episode, we have I had um, Exa um, Xavier's getting ready. It looks like he's going to do a kamikaze run at Master Mode, and Magneto comes nearby and saves him with an additional shield to stop stop the blast from killing Xavier. Yeah. And when they and when he's parachuting down, they have a nice you know dialogue between the two of them, establishing their friendship and frenemies. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, relationship to each other. And I think it's the best thing that the movies have, have kept from our oh, show yeah. was yeah. their relationship. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a really great question to be like the last question. Which mutant power would you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. There's lots of them. But I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. But um, uh, I saw, I don't know, when I saw that film with, with Nightcrawler popping all over the place Bam. and taking everybody, it's Bam. like, Bam. that'd be kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd like further than line of sight. <laughs> 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 that's, the, that's the problem I always have, because I love Nightcrawler's powers. Like, right. I yeah. really love it. But then when, when it comes into like, oh, well, I have to know where I'm going. bamfing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like some cheese, I'm going to Switzerland. <laughs> right, it doesn't yeah. work, because you can wind up, you know, yeah. in yeah. the Alps and not yeah. in a village with cheese. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, superpowers. I, flying has always been my childhood dream. Uh, you know, I think with drones now it'll be more problematic. <laughs> but I think that would. But that flying would be, like Magneto or flying like Banshee, like who who would you fly like? Yeah. Rogue flies. Doesn't Rogue yeah, flies also. Yeah, uh, yeah. Would, that's true. That. We had yeah. a, we had a distinction. We were told you got to be specific with Storm. She doesn't fly. Yeah. She drifts on mm -hmm. air currents mm -hmm. that she yeah. creates. Yeah. And like, so she uses we animated sound her. Waves to fly. Yeah. So there's like we, different yeah. characters yeah. flying. Which ways. that'd be unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but you see, I'm, I think that'd be fun. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I would choose Storm because also with the powers I'm, that she. I has. was thinking Banshee. Oh, Banshee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at us both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that you know, it's it's always fun to get in there and get visceral like Wolverine and just tear something up. But mm. if you want to take out an army, Storm's powers oh. up there, she can control the weather. That would be, yeah. and she can yeah. fly. That so that would, would be fun. I'm just going to interject. Please note, and you guys have talked about this at panels, the most powerful characters in this series are the women. Character. Oh yeah, just a coincidence. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, the Omega level mutant here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. What, exactly. What do you yeah. do with this? Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. 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 So it just uh, it was yeah. an interesting dynamic, and probably not something that one saw too often at that time. Mm -hmm. or, now, even or, now. or even yeah. now. Well, I mean, we've got a certain Captain Marvel coming out. And this she, is true. She's going to, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, yeah. be 
kind of up there in the scale of things. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, when you think about it, you think about, like, you think of Storm, Rogue, and Jean Grey at first, yeah. and then you're like, oh, right, the actual leader is Xavier, but, yeah. right. you know, when <laughs> yeah. you send out your army, you're sending, like, Rogue, Jean Grey, right. and Storm. Storm. can pick up yeah. a bus. Yeah. Go with yeah. that. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and, and yet it didn't draw attention to itself right. in that, well, the men are less than. It, it was, no, 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 this no. was just absolute. Everybody and everybody equality. was powerful when yeah. everyone has powers. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And we, and we specifically chose the team f from the writing side to be as distinct from each other as possible. None of them are like the others. Right. There's no yeah. duplication. As I said, we could have had, we could have B Bishop and, and, uh, and Wolverine and, and Cable and Colossus and we could have had six big gruff guys yeah. <laughs> right. growling at each other and the, we, yeah. you can't tell stories that right. way so <coughs> we picked yeah. Yeah. oh quick favorite power it's, uh, that's that's rough uh, <laughs> I know uh, Jean and Xavier have I, I guess Jean's is a little more interesting because she's more empathetic and she she's more protective you know she uh, which is and we we never we she wasn't necessarily going to be a major character. She and Beast were not written on the first line of characters mm -hmm. when we left when we started building the show, mm -hmm. and then we started writing the show. And both of them asserted themselves as yeah. absolutely necessary. To be <sighs> but yeah, we, we put Beast in jail because we thought he was just going to be in two or three episodes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And suddenly we said, <laughs> no, no, we can't. I don't know. I would, I would not have, like I loved Beast. Like I yeah. loved him so much. Yeah. I can't imagine the show without. Beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. we can't do that. <laughs> but again, civil disobedience. Right. You know, introducing that concept into a Saturday morning kids show mm -hmm. and, and, and then watching it play out. You know, that's, right. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. I was that's impressed crazy. that you could do that. Thank you guys so much for being here. We still have another X-Men segment, so if you'd like to stick around and talk to us about a couple of our premium format figures, sure. we'd love to have you. Sure. But we are going to give you all a short video break. We'll be right back. Thank you for watching Sideshow Live. Okay, cool.
Sideshow Live. We are back with the creators of the X-Men animated show. So, yay! And um, we're here with our X-Men premium format figures as well, you guys. So we were bringing them out, and it was kind of incredible to watch your reactions <laughs> to these pieces. You were like, whoa, these yeah. are amazing. Yeah, um, I had never seen these before. Yeah. yeah. These yeah. are incredible. The, look at the, the, the detail. detail. The, 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 the oh hand, the well, detail. The magnetos the on the posing. head. Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, I, uh, he's standing on a sentinel. That's yeah, so they're, they're meant to be, obviously, a team. You can yeah. And you can put Magneto on either side, because sometimes, as you all know, they're fighting something bigger, bigger. Yes. and so you have Magneto on the sentinel head, Wolverine is on one of the sentinel hands, and actually X-23 is on the other hand, because... Oh, oh, oh nice, nice. Okay. Um, nice. And then uh, Mystique herself has broken into the school, because she's on the seal. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Not a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a really awesome, we also really love Easter eggs. Ooh, just uh -huh. so you, uh, there is a fist in the seal that uh -huh. is breaking it, and that oh. is Juggernaut's fist. No! Oh. <laughs> oh my god, look at that! Yeah, it's right here. Look wow. at that! Oh, wow. So, oh. um, they're all meant to be together. You, we also have a rogue who has a, her exclusive is a animated series inspired swap out portrait, and she's in the, um, in the danger room. Danger room. I always want to call it the ready room. <laughs> that's Star Trek, so that's different. That's okay. um, that's okay. By the way, look at my sweet hat, uh. Child of the Atom. <laughs> <laughs> Previously on the X-Men. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. But yeah, this is amazing. So I have some stats on these figures that I need to not oh forget about. Um, so we're going to start over here with Wolverine. Wolverine mm. is um, about 15.5 inches tall because obviously he's a little bit shorter, shorter. stockier. Uh -huh. His um, claws are real metal, so be a little bit careful around them. Mixed oh. media statue standing on the, uh, the sentinel hand base. He is, his exclusive is actually waitlisted, wow. but it was an unmasked portrait um, that showed like Logan type face. It's unbelievable. Pretty sweet. Yeah. 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 It's a really, really Look sweet. Look at that. Yeah. It's great. Sweet Wolverine. But the, the, this wow. is the collector's edition and it is still available. But uh, unfortunately, the exclusive already sold out. So you can't get that, but you can get this one. And he is super rad. Um, I actually did a call out in the Let Your Geek Side Show Facebook group for a couple of Wolverine pictures that I think Sam can pull up how people display Wolverine in their oh, collection. Oh, oh my that. God. Nice. Yeah. So oh my it's God. super fun. We have this Facebook group where we have. Um, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Giant X Men number one. Oh, mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah. Look at that. Good work, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Super oh. awesome. Yeah. Genius. Genius. <laughs> and then that's the oh. unmasked oh. portrait yeah. that you can see. Yeah, it needs yeah. therapy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's super amazing. And then that one, I loved it because you can see Magneto in the background. Yeah. So they oh. displayed both of them. But man, and then there's obviously oh, nice. them paired together. That's cool. Wow. Look it's, at that. I love collectors because oh, they're yeah. so creative with yeah. and no no two of them look the same. No. They're they're all completely so different. So the helmet well, on this comes off or Yes, uh, the ex so we <coughs> like to move on to Magneto. Magneto, um, his exclusive edition is still available and it comes with a swap out unhelmeted portrait, which oh, I wow. what is it actual? What what, what, are we it? what I call it is I call it the silver fox portrait. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> because um, yeah, I mean he's a good looking they sculpted his face well, so he's a little bit of a silver fox guy going on there. Thank you, thank you for that, producer Jeff. Um, but yeah, um, his cape is a fully fabric cape, with, oh my God, and it's posable, wired. so you can actually oh pose it into any type of thing. This was professionally posed by Tim. No, who was it? No, no was it? Yeah. This looks like a Tim cape. Did you do it? <gasps> nice. Jeff. Well done. Well done. I'm learning. Because usually we get the head of cut and sew because he's very particular about cape posing. But cut looks like and sew. That's a division of sideshow. Yes. Oh, wow. well Wait. done. <laughs> <laughs> they yes. um, they do everything from custom print jobs to like fabrics that don't actually exist. Like sometimes they have to create a fabric that doesn't exist. You'll you'll learn all oh all God. more when we tour you guys. That's amazing. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> You're in for a real treat. This yeah. is Willy Wonka for adults. We'll, we'll check in next week. <laughs> yeah. Because we'll be just here. We'll so, yeah. Magneto does have the Sentinel head base. 
Um, yeah. Meant to oh. pair with Wolverine and X twenty three. Oh, should God, you look at that? The cables coming out the side. Yeah. It's just oh. it's just a, like the level you of can detail. what how the sculptor did it was they sculpted a sentinel, and then so that way everything would match. Okay. Right. So the sculptor made the whole sentinel and then took apart pieces in order to make to, it to mush it, mush it, make it mush fit. So wow. that was a head that was. I mean, with digital ZBrush now, they can right. sculpt the whole thing. Oh, and that's then true. Smush the, the, smush the head it, yeah. Yeah. and put it in Magneto's face. Wow. It's I, amazing. My God. Uh huh. Just yeah. dazzling. Yeah. It's spectacular. So he stands about 25 inches tall. Obviously, yeah. he's hovering over his base yeah. because, of, you know, Magneto yeah. flies. Yeah. 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 Look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then next to him is his right-hand woman, so to speak, Mystique. This is one of the first times we're actually showing her because she's mm. just about to start shipping. Mm -hmm. oh. Just started, actually. Just started. Oh, how People, she, are, oh. Just People are just now. starting to get Mystique wow. right now. Yes. Um, yeah. And her exclusive is still available as well. And her exclusive is a swap out arm where she's morph morphing. She's shape shifting into X23 as well. So she has oh. the claw. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Shall I rotate? You can. <laughs> Go for it, Lynn. That would be amazing. So she um, she oh stands God. at about 17 inches tall, a little bit taller than that. Um, and then she has obviously her blue skin, red hair. Her um, costume is fully fabric. It is entirely sculpted. But, so uh, this is all this is all fabric right. too. Yeah. Right? Or I mean, fully. What did I? I said. You said fully fabric. fabric. Yeah. Fully fab. It's fully sculpted. Fully sculpted. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. It wow. looks like fabric. It does yeah. look like fabric, which is why I actually had to look that up right before the show because I was like, <laughs> I thought she was fabric. No, she's she's sculpted. But the way the flow of the skirt. Look at that. Right. Unbelievable. You can't even. I can't even. And then obviously she comes with the Professor Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters seal. That has been crushed by Juggernaut. Which is mm. Wow. Cool. Well cool. done, artist. So, yes. Yeah, this is, people are wow. just about to start getting Mystique, so this is kind of your like <coughs> first, first last look. Because like if you pre ordered her, you're just about to get her, but she's still available, so you can get her <laughs> and she'll start shipping right now. You're oh awesome. Gosh. Wow. Save your shelf space. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> clear it all out. This could yeah. be your display <laughs> right here. Yeah, this and then. Yes. Oh, ah. oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yes. There you go. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. And then you start singing the song, and then it's all good. Just have like the song. By the way, that was my first ringtone when you know you first could sure, get sure. ringtones. Oh, yeah. da -da 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 -da. That is my ringtone. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. That's fantastic. That, do you that, have, that yeah, ringtone also money, should know. It took about off. twelve times <laughs> or fifteen yeah. times to get that. Yeah. Really? It was. Yeah. Really, it was now, uh, the the opening itself. Larry and Will basically knocked off in a weekend. That the entire the whole the whole what? opening the whole that, that, whole right minute. There, right there, that, right there, right there. I imagine it did one draft, took a couple of notes, polished it up, and it, they were done. Yeah. The song, the poor guy had. Yeah. He <laughs> would come in and listen. Is it? No, it's not intense enough. It's not. X Men enough. Oh my gosh. Right. Add mm. another layer, add another layer, and he yeah. was ready to kill us. <laughs> yeah. But That's then but so then it finally cool. got right and we all knew it was right. Yeah. And yeah. Phil, Phil so, named Ron Wasserman. Oh Ron yeah. Wasserman he didn't, get the music. didn't get credit on the Credits because that's the way Hollywood works. But yeah. he wrote the music for this and the Power Rangers opening. Yeah. Both. So that no guy, royalties. No royalties. But, <laughs> but, but great, but, but great fame among people that know him. Wow. Yeah. And what's his name again? Say his name. Ron Wasserman. Ron Wasserman. Ron Wasserman. Let's yeah. all remember another, his name. Another unsung hero. Yeah. 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 Let's right. get yeah. Ron Wasserman. Man, look at that. Look at yeah. that. And right. just yeah. the way you introduced everybody. I introduced. In this yeah. and, and, I introduced and as many characters as I could, and I. When I was drawing that, sometimes they wouldn't. We didn't have logos like some yeah. characters you saw, like Storm and, and Xavier. I was calling back to Bob Harris back in New York, mm -hmm. like, I need logos. I need logos, and you know, quickly. And I only got a few of them. I got the Gambit. I got got Beast and a couple of them. But the rest of them, I just had to make up. Oh my gosh! Because I, I knew I was going to try. I was trying to introduce these characters to the world. So that's why all the characters are accompanied with Cyclops and oh. Storm, and you know. So people can really know know exactly who they are. 
Absolutely. In season one, you know, we were trying to get it off the ground and make sure people didn't get confused as to what was going on. That's amazing. And now, like, everyone uses those logos. Yeah. 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 yeah, now they do. Yeah. yeah now yeah. they're all. Checks in the mail, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Once again, thank you guys so much for oh, joining us. You guys oh, have been welcome. such a treat. I'm thank just, you. like, geeking thank out. Like, entirely. <laughs> I'm never going to get over this. It's fine. Oh. It's fine. I, this is what I look like. I feel like I'm eight again, and I'm just like, ah. So, again, thank you. Thank you so oh, much thank for you. being here. Thank you for having us. Oh, my thank gosh. You, thank There's you. still one more segment, guys, um, but you are relieved <laughs> <laughs> after your hour Q&A. Thank oh, you guys no. so much for being here. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be right back with the Kids Sideshow Challenge. So you're watching Sideshow Live. We'll be right back. child that like is like an alien chest burster they all they all were like yeah that's really awesome I'm gonna keep not doing this anyway I'm still live right anyway um, so we had an awesome giveaway we started the let your kids side show challenge last week with the hot toys Batman imposter version of the Joker and that goes to Dun, 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 dun. Shane C. from Seattle, Washington. So yay, congratulations Woo! to Shane. You have won the Hot Toys Batman Imposter version Joker. That's like a really cool sold out piece. So um, we wanted to make sure that there was an awesome thing for this week. Speaking of sold out pieces. Speaking of sold out pieces, what do we have this week, Buffy? The Avengers Age of Ultron, Ultron Mark One from Hot Toys. What? Ah. So cool. This is so cool. I'm trying to like look at it in the monitor. It comes with like a little like Iron Legion like torso because Ultron ripped it up. That's what he did. Oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm like moving too fast. I'm still a little <laughs> bit nervous from everything. So there are 30 ways 30, as in three zero ways to enter anywhere from one to 10 entries, but there are three challenges this time, three that will get you hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of bonus entries. So they are, you can create your own Ultron costume out of only found materials. I believe Buffy and I call this cobbled cosplay. Cobbled cosplay. Cobbled cosplay. <laughs> so. Uh, only found materials you can post your photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram for 200, 200 bonus entries. So if you post it in all three places, what is 200 times three? 950. No. <laughs> no, it's not. Bubby is not so good with the numbers. She's real cute, though. Um, 600. <laughs> that would be 600 entries. 600 entries. So then there's the There Are No Strings On Me challenge. Uh, 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 get it? Uh, because Ultron says that in the movie, yeah. Um, where you, it is called Age of Ultron Sock Puppet Theater. Thank you, I <laughs> missed, there's like four cameras. Anyway, um, so you can recreate any scene from Age of Ultron using only sock puppets. 
That's amazing. Am I, am I eligible to enter? No. No? Well, say, I mean, you say can, yes, so she'll do it. I'm like, I, you can do it, you just can't win anything. Yeah. Well, that's that's a bummer. What if I want? Well, whatever, fine. Um, so if you post a 30 second or less video to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you can have 300 bonus entries. So if you do it in all three places, I'm not gonna make Buffy do math again, that's 900 wow. entries. How many? Nine. Hundred entries. And Thank you. <laughs> and 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 fifty. 50. That's Buffy's answer. Oh, yeah. 50. fifty. Fifty. No, no, 50. 900, 950. Oh. <laughs> so then we come to our third challenge, which is show us your vision. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh wow! I like I like that in the in the the booth over there. Oh. Someone just went. Oh wow! So show us your vision. Whoever goes. <laughs> So your vision is you can make your own vision out of anything that you have lying around, which could mean anything. Like, how do you see vision? Is vision, I don't know. I'm in love with vision, so there, you know, anyway. Um, post a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram for another 200 bonus entries. So if you post it in all three places, again, that's another 600 bonus entries. So let's say you do all three, you make a sock puppet theater, you do cobbled cosplay with Ultron, and you also make your own vision. That's um, 1,200 plus 900, which is... A 50! 50 <laughs> entry! <laughs> um, well, why can't I do 1,200? 20, 2,100. 2,100. 2,100. I'm also not so good at math. So um, 2,100 entries. So yeah, you could do 10 entries for, with 30 different ways, or you could do three things and get... 2100 entries so my guess is i don't know this is a really really awesome piece for anyone who is a fan of the avengers of age of ultron of ultron of comics of marvel i don't know do i just can keep going right there so if you do all of these you could be our let your kids side show challenge winner for the week just head on over to see all of the ways you can enter at side.show slash ultron challenge that side dot show slash Ultron challenge or just look right there because it's it's at the bottom of the screen. They posted it for you. You guys, I can't even deal with how awesome this show has been. Besides that, like this incredible Ultron challenge, I really, really look forward to seeing some of these puppet theaters, right? This is what they're going to look like, except with Ultron happening, right? All the details and the rules and everything are on the link. Everything that you need to know is on the link. You guys, this has been amazing. We have all become our former child selves, and we all will be singing the X-Men theme song the whole rest of the day. Thank you guys, thank you to Larry, to Len, to Eric, to Julia for coming in and talking about X-Men the Animated Series with us. I was like this close to tears the entire time. I'm probably gonna go cry for like an hour. Just to like... Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> um, guys, thank you so much for watching. We have a... Sideshow and Tell next Tuesday with Michael Nathanson from The Punisher. And then we have um, Sideshow Live next Wednesday as well, featuring items from Lord of the Rings and Middle Earth, I believe. Yes? Hobbit and Lord, Hobbit of, the and Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's the yeah. same. That's so Middle Earth. Yeah, Middle Earth. Yeah. I knew what I was talking about. So you guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, our next episode, Buffy's going to throw up the link. Click the little bell so you can be notified as to when that happens. And then on Facebook, head on over and like subscribe to the event so you know when Sideshow and Tell is happening. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Unruly is launching. Follow Unruly on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Follow Court of the Dead on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. How many more things can I plug? We can uh, just like, this is... Keep going. Just keep going. I should just keep talking. Let's see. Go in the Facebook group. I'm gonna oh, right. The Facebook group. We'll drop a link to all of our Sideshow staff <gasps> accounts where we're going to be doing giveaways and sneak peeks. Yeah. The time, the oh, yeah. That's right. Now the Sideshow staff, we all have like Sideshow accounts. And because Buffy made everybody do it. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's true for like most of the people. Buffy was like, so Susan's doing this and I'm going to make all of you do it because then Susan won't feel like such a loser being all by herself. Um, Jeff. <laughs>
thank you guys so much for watching. Buffy's gonna put a link in the Facebook group. If you're not a member of the Let Your Geek Side Show Facebook group, go ahead and join. It is an awesome, fun place to oh, let your geek side show. Um, you can follow all of us there on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, because those are, those are the cool places to be right now. You guys, this has been so, so, so amazing. Thank you all for watching, and don't forget to let your geek side show. Bye, everyone.